Okay, so now we're going to talk about conductors and insulators and how they relate to electricity. So you probably have a fair bit of experience with these, whether you realize it or not. And again, we've used them in your um, activities right before the break. So conductors are materials that allow electrons to flow easily through them. I always think about like a conductor on a train. Um, or a conductor of an orchestra. So those are things that direct or guide things and make things easier to happen. So examples of conductors are most of the metals, so silver, copper, which most of our wires are made out of, gold, aluminum, iron, nickel. Um, now in the sense of electricity, um, there are things like superconductors, semiconductors. Right now we're just going to talk about conductors and insulators. So you may hear those terms later on, um, and those terms are correct. Um, water and carbon are materials that have the ability to conduct, um, but you're going to check this in your reading. Um, and note when water is a good conductor and when water is a bad conductor. Insulators then are materials that do not allow electrons to flow through them easily and they tend to trap them in a specific area of the material. So it's not that the material can't accept electrons onto it, so there can still be a transfer of an electron, but when there's a transfer, the electrons are not going to spread out evenly through the material in order to create um, a dispersion of the charges, the charges are going to collect in one area and by doing so then um, that allows for things like your balloon to stick to the wall. So examples of these include um, rubber, glass, wool, most plastics, wood, dry air, okay so these materials you'll notice are mostly non-metal. So let's think about the example we already know about, okay? So we already know about rubbing a balloon with your hair, okay? So we have already done this. Um, so we have our balloon that we used, okay? And our balloon is going to have positive charges on it. So our balloon has some positives and it's also going to have some whoops negatives on it. Okay. There we go. So this balloon is neutral right now. This balloon is going to rub against your head. Okay, so here's your hair. All right. And here you are, here's your pretty little face. All right, you're pretty happy to have your head rubbed with the balloon. So what happens then is your hair gets all messed up after being rubbed by the balloon. So here you are again and oh, your hair's all messy. And the balloon pulls away, and what happens on the balloon is it still has those one, two, three, four plus charges. And with those plus charges, it still has its one, two, three, four negatives. But now it's attracted some of the negatives that were in your hair, and they've transferred onto the balloon. Okay? Now, because this balloon is made out of rubber and it's an insulator, okay, the area on the balloon that was rubbed is now charged. And this is what allowed you to stick the balloon to the wall. If we had a different type of balloon, okay, so let's turn the page. If you had a balloon that was coated in metal, or you had the balloon 
like the mylar type balloon, okay? So here's your balloon now. And your balloon rubs against your hair. This time you'll have straight hair. Oopsies. Okay. So the balloon again is going to start off by having positives and negatives in it. Okay, but now when it rubs against your head, what's going to happen? Is those negatives will still transfer over. But your balloon, which is going to have one, two, three, four positives, stay on it. And these negatives stay here. And negatives transferred on from the rubbing. But because it's made out of metal, they're going to spread out throughout the balloon. So the result is that the metal coated balloon does not stick to the wall because the electrons do not stay in one spot. They distribute themselves evenly throughout the entire balloon. And this is because, remember, like charges repel each other. So this is the way insulators and conductors work. So what you're going to do now is there's some reading in your textbook on page 401. Okay, so you're going to go to page 400 and 401. And there's a little chart there, table 10.2. You're just going to make that table along with your notes that lists all of your conductors and insulators. Okay, so that is the end of conductors and insulators and that will lead us into our next activity in class.